how's it going today? And I want to show you how to use and create dynamic material instances today. This is something that seems pretty simple to do, but for some reason it just get, it can get frustrating. But what we're going to do is just create these balls that change color on their own. And I just have them triggered by walking up close to them. It's really cool. This is like, I think, a 10 second color change that's going on there. So anyway, I'll show you how to do this and hopefully this won't take more than 10 minutes. So I'm gonna just start from scratch and I'll escape out of here and we'll just go to, I've been working on some things today in Lightwave and also using Unreal Engine. But let me go in here and I'm going to go to new project. We'll go to first person and we just need starter content. We'll go create, not save, don't save. Just takes a minute to load up. Okay, so here we go. So what's interesting about this dynamic material instances is that it can be very simple and basic, but yet I've noticed there's a lot of little places where you can get stuck because you can only drag off certain pins and variables. And if you try to drag off the wrong variable or you forget something, it's very easy to make a misstep for some reason. Don't ask me why. So to get started on this, we're just gonna create a new material. I'm not gonna make anything too complicated. And the names of things do kind of matter. So don't want a complicated name. You want something that's easy to remember. So I'm just going to call this color, <laughs> color one, just so I don't forget color. I might even make a note of that. Now we're just going to click into this and we're going to create a color variable or color vector. So we'll just do a four. So I'll press four on the keyboard and click. And this gives us a RGB plus an alpha channel. And we'll just click this into the base color here. Now what we have to do is convert this to a parameter so that the blueprint will be able to see it. It won't be able to see it if it just is a vector here. So we're gonna right click and convert to parameter. And the name of this again is important. So we'll just call this color, whoops, color. This name is actually very important. So color one, two, we'll call it color one, two and we'll see it up here. So don't forget that name, color one, because we'll need to know it twice. Okay, so then we're just gonna go apply and save. And basically we're done here. And it's gonna be default by black because all the values are gonna be zero. So now what we're gonna do is create a blueprint and we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to blueprint class. We're gonna go to actor doesn't matter what this is actually called. So double click into it. We'll go ahead and dock it. So I'm going to create a sphere just as a visual representation in the scene so we can see, have something to see. And then, like I said, this is going to be triggered by a collision. So we're going to get a box collision here. And then rather than pull these, I'm just going to come over here and go five, five, five just so we have a nice big trigger there. Now, the other thing we need to do is click back on the sphere. And now we need to, that material that we just created, we need to put it on the sphere. So that'll become important. So we'll just come in here and it was called color, color one, and there it is. And so it's very important that that sphere be linked to that material that we're gonna make an instance of. So we'll be back here in just a minute. So now we're gonna go into the construction script and we're going to make, this is where we're really gonna create the material instance, the dynamic material instance. And so here, this is one of those things where you could get frustrated. I'll show you how you can get messed up. So if I were just to right click right now and go create material instance, you would think it would just be like right here, but these are not the categories that I want. So to get to the category that I want, the safest way is just to drag the sphere off and go drag it off and get it from here. And that way you know it's the right one because it'll link up automatically, create dynamic material instance. 
and so you know this is the right one because it's directly linked and this element index zero that's referring to this zero so that is the connection there this this establishes a connection between the material that we're going to be changing and the material on the sphere okay and so on here that's pretty much it. I do need to put this in there, wire that in there. I can bring this down here so it's they're not and crossing over each other. Now here's the second area that you got can get messed up on is that we need a so we're gonna be changing the color variable and then we're gonna be transmitting that over to the materials on the sphere. But what are we gonna put that change in? We need a placeholder to put these changes that we're gonna be making and we don't have anywhere to put those changes right now. So we have to make that and we're gonna make a variable. And it'd be like, well, where are we gonna make it? We're gonna come over here and make it? No, what we're gonna do is come over here on the return value and make it out of here because this is coming from the material instance. So we're gonna go promote to a variable and what we're gonna call this is material we'll just call it material because that's what it is and that's where we'll store our changing material values in this material value here and it comes all linked up and set automatically so that is done so that's pretty much it and then all we have to do now is just go back into the viewport and click on the box collider and if we scroll down here we can get on component begin overlap and this is what's going to start everything so once we are in the game and we hit the box collider it's going to trigger the sphere material to start changing and changing in what way is going to be based on a timeline that we're going to create right here so what i'm going to do is just right click and go timeline and you can come back and play around with it. there's a lot to explore inside the timeline here but there's four different kinds of tracks. We're gonna add a color track. And this takes some finagling to get used to, but we're gonna make it, you can make this as long as you want. Let's just go ahead and make it, for instance, we can make it 15 seconds. And then I hit scroll bar, I can see the whole timeline here, and I hit right click, right mouse button, I can kind of squeeze down. These markers on the bottom are for opacity, and so, they don't really affect anything, so we don't need to adjust those. Unless you wanted to fade something out completely, they might have a use, but I don't really need them. And then on here, these are our color markers. So that right now it would change from black to white over the course of 15 seconds. So why don't I just add one more color in here? We'll go right click, add color to curve. And then if I click here, double click here, I can change the color. So maybe, let's say I want to make it red for some reason. So I'll just make it kind of red, or whatever color that is, and go OK. And now you can see the color is going to change and fade. It's going to get that color, and then it's going to go to white. Or maybe I'll change this color too. So let me get a different color. Maybe blue, some kind of blue. And that's good enough. So you can play around with these to your heart's content. And then we'll just go compile and save. And now we'll go back into the event graph. And then all we gotta do is plug this into play from start. And now here's the next one is, the question is, well, where do we get that variable from? How are we gonna change things? So that's another thing that can mess you up is we got this material variable over here so we're just going to click and drag on it and go get and then off of it then we're going to search for what's called the set vector parameter values and the the good thing about doing this is because we're dragging it from this variable we know it's correctly linked as it is and then all we have to do is plug this into here and the values here into here. And then all we have to do is remember that our parameter name back on our color here, color one, that's all we have to remember. So we have to just literally write that in there exactly the same, color one, and compile and save. So like I said, 
there's really not that complicated these nodes it's really not a lot here to do it's just knowing what to pull off of because if you don't pull off of the right variable you won't get the right inputs that you need and that's where you can get really tripped up on this whole thing so there's it's one of these things you have to be kind of very careful on doing for some reason with material instances it's, it seems very unforgiving so anyway now we're we're done as far as i know so all we have to do is just drag our spheres into our scene we can drag as many as we want just has so much application so now all i have to do is hit play and down in the game there's one of the spheres and of course <laughs> Oh, it is changing. There we go. I was thinking it wasn't working. <laughs> so maybe my... There. There we go. It's just a slow change is what it is. Yeah. Oh, it's for over 15 seconds. So you can really see it changing. Yeah, so it's something just to really play around with. Those could change. And then it's play from start. So it's going to change every time I come up, come up on it. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I will talk to you later.